Well, welcome to After the Sermon. Uh, I believe today is August the 2nd. I don't keep up with the dates very well, but August the 2nd, 2000, or 2020. Yes, 2020. We'll go with that. Yeah, almost said 2002. <laughs> 2020, and uh, just uh, got finished with um, the Lord's Supper. We got finished with our worship service, and um, I preached on the everlasting God from Genesis chapter 21, verses 22 through 34. And we talked about Abraham really having an act of faith. He, he demonstrated his faith there by um, digging a well, making a covenant with Abimelech, the king of that particular area, and he planted a tamarisk tree. And so we, we were talking about um, just those land promises that God made to Abraham before we, before we started the, rolling the camera uh, this morning. But, you know, one of the things that, that didn't make the sermon that we need to mention here, those of you that watched the sermon, were here for the sermon, you know, Abraham knew uh, already that he wasn't going to inherit the land. And so if you're, if you're watching the 1030, you're probably going to get that one. But um, if, in case I forget to say it again, Abraham knew he wasn't going to get the land. He knew that it was for his descendants after him. And yet he's doing things like digging the well, he's doing things like planting the tree, mm -hmm. calling on the name of the Lord to establish mm -hmm. that land for his posterity. He's thinking beyond himself. And so as we were, as we were discussing what we were going to talk about in here, we, we mentioned eschatology just for a minute. And so, of course, eschatology is the study of the last things. Mm -hmm. We talk about the second coming of Christ. We talk about the eternal state, um, those theological terms. But oftentimes, um, we in America today especially, we often just think about heaven as our final home. Mm -hmm. But the Bible teaches us that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, a new earth where righteousness dwells. And so these places that we visit now, uh, the place where Abraham uh, plants the, the tamarisk tree, uh, that city Beersheba, which is still a city today, you can still go there today, uh, they even have Abraham's well there, uh, or supposedly Abraham's well, at least a well near where Abraham would have dug that one. The, the Bible seems to point to the fact that we're coming back to the earth. So there, there'll be some time in heaven, but there'll be some time on earth as well for us. And so how do you think that's affected our ability really to do what the sermon was driving at? And that is to really invest beyond our own lives, yeah. um, do things that are that are beyond our ability to accomplish. I know growing up, one of the most common views I heard about kind of like eternity and earth and because it was that like the fire is coming, so get on the boat before it gets here. Yeah. This idea that Christianity is an escape from the judgment that's going to happen. And if you don't get on the boat that's going towards heaven, mm -hmm. you're going to get caught in the fire. That's, as though we're abandoning this ship and getting into God's... Sal salvation ship, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but, uh, but um, and I understand where that comes from, but I think what you're getting at, and I think where we would kind of be on the same page now would be that there's a sense to where um, the disembodied state, the in heaven state, is this temp is a temporary place mm -hmm. that we go between when we die and when Christ comes back and makes all things right. And just as we're going to be resurrected and have physical bodies but glorified, renewed bodies, there is a similar um, renewal for the creation. Mm -hmm. That's what Romans talks about. Mm -hmm. Creation groans away in relation to the sons of men. Creation itself has been built, has been bending under a curse. Mm -hmm. And when Christ comes back, he's going to lift and remove that curse. So there is some continuity. There's some c continuing from what is going on right now in creation into what it will look like after Christ comes back. And so much of our vision for this world, for this life, isn't thinking about what do we do now that not only echoes in terms of our salvation, right, um, or in our evangelism with others, but actually echoes in terms of what God is doing in his creation itself. Um, I have some weird scandalous tangents. I'll just hold them off for my small group. Um, but, um, but, yeah, just, but, um, but yeah, I mean, so I think you're right. I think there is something that we've lost. Mm -hmm. We don't, don't have an awareness that God is doing something in us. And just as we will continue into eternity, but renewed and glorified, so will creation itself have a material, um, renewed existence. Yeah. I, I, I was just thinking that it seems in a lot of people's eschatology where there's that focus on just on heaven where... Mm -hmm. You know, I get to see my grandmother again, and I get to see my family again, mm -hmm. and I get to maybe maybe they, you know, think of seeing God, and and then 
it, every I get my mansion and everything's mm-hmm. good. Kind of forget, I, I think, two very important things. Number one is just the the creation mandate mm-hmm. uh, in Genesis. It's you know, God point. says, yeah. fill the earth and subdue it. You are now caretakers of this place. Mm-hmm. And if our mindset is, I just want to get to heaven mm-hmm. and I don't care about what I do here, yeah. we're really missing yeah. the very first commandment yeah. God ever gives us. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, uh, you know, Jesus himself says, what we do on here, here on earth mm-hmm. affects what our life is going to be in heaven. Yeah. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, That's good. We, I don't think we've thought deeply enough about what that actually means. Um, and there are some people that have probably taken that into weird areas, you know, mm-hmm. but but there's truth to it. What what we do here, Abraham planting a, a well and planting a tree, um, that was treasures in the eternal kingdom, not just in the promised land. And he got to see those at some point. You know, we, we do forget that oftentimes that, you know, Jesus, when he, when he comes out of the tomb, when he's resurrected, he eats with the disciples. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's not that he's just floating around. I mean, he's got a, a glorified body. Yep. That, that he comes out with, he's recognizable. Um, he can be touched. Um, mm-hmm. he, he, he he dines with them. Mm-hmm. And we're even told in the Gospels that many will come from the East and West and dine with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob mm-hmm. in the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we understand that there's a lot of the earthly aspects that we experience now that we will experience perfectly yeah. in, in eternity and so in a renewed earth. So with that in mind and knowing that we're not just going to be done with this earth, but we're coming back. Yeah. Um, and, and God is going to fulfill all of his promises as he's, as he's made in Scripture. How do we invest where we are? So oftentimes, especially in, in 21st century America, we're so transient. I mean, so people move from job to job, and they, they typically stay in a church from, for five to six years, and then they move on somewhere else because of the job change or retirement or something like that. So oftentimes our lives seem to be on hold. Yeah. How do you invest in in the in eternity, mm-hmm. where you are right now, knowing that you may not get to stay in that particular place? How do you put down roots yeah. um, in in what you would consider a temporary place? What will you guys think about that? I think probably the the simplest way is is by really connecting with the community you're a part of. Mm-hmm. Like we we know. From Scripture, we know that we need God's given us people to help sanctify us, and for us to help sanctify them. And one of the big things we do, we know we're just checking out or we're passing through. We can cut ourselves off from those relationships of people, um, and in doing so, we're cutting them off from the reason God's placed us in that community, and we're cutting ourselves off from the reasons why He has placed them in our lives. So the simplest thing is, is you can quickly begin to pursue and, and create relationships. Mm-hmm. Get meals over lunch, go to a prayer meeting, plug into things as a way to actually create real relationships. You might not be there forever, but the Lord can be doing things in you and through you in other people's lives as you seek to have real relationships with people asking how to pray for them, seeking to care for them, giving your, yourself in that way. That might not have like the, the clear material kind of, like that. It, might, it might be creating a new building you know, for the next generation, mm-hmm. but that's investing in people. Um, and that investment will continue long after you're gone. Or if, you're gonna, or if God surprises you, keeps you there longer, you've already put down some really meaningful groundwork into being a part of that community or part. So that's just one, yeah. but the people part is huge. Yeah. I, I think maybe mindset wise we need to have kind of a mindset that I think Paul had you know he's a he's our first example of a missionary and everywhere he goes he considers it temporary hmm. he, every every church he goes to his goal mm-hmm. is never to stay there mm-hmm. and preach there forever his goal is he longs to go and visit people yeah and then visit other people mm-hmm. and his goal is I'm gonna plant a church mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to the Jews first and I'm gonna plant a church mm-hmm. and there's gonna be elders and I'm gonna leave and I, I think if we maybe we're not all called to be missionaries or church planters mm-hmm. but if we had that kind of temporary mindset mm-hmm. where I'm not here forever you know I'm not I'm not in this state forever mm-hmm. I'm not in this place forever and I'm not guaranteed tomorrow mm-hmm. so it, we, I think we we kind of have to I mean, Jesus' own words, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a foolish thing 
uh, for someone to say, well, I'll go into this town mm-hmm. and I'll make this money, much yeah. money. He says, no, if the Lord wills, yeah. you will. And so we have to have that mindset. Well, if the Lord wills, mm-hmm. well, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. So it's God's will for me to be here. So what am I going to do with it? Mm-hmm. I think we just have that that temporary mindset. Yeah. And, you know, the truth of the matter is we're, we're temporary everywhere we go. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're not going to live forever. Mm-hmm. And so that at some point, either we'll, the Lord will come or they'll have our funeral. And so we're, we're temporary wherever. But that, that's one of the important aspects of church life that we need to consider here, mm-hmm. too, is the people that we go to church with, mm-hmm. no matter how many churches you've been involved with, those are people that we're going to be in heaven with. We're going to mm-hmm. spend eternity with those same people. And so yeah. those relationships mm-hmm. are never in vain. Um, even they may be temporary on earth, Mm -hmm. but they will last forever. Mm -hmm. And so that, that means that we probably should work harder at getting along with each other too in the church, because you know, you don't want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and have to work out some details that you should have worked out on planet earth. But I don't know if that happens or not. My eschatology may be bad there, but, um, you know, you you definitely don't want to do that. And, and, you know, just kind of speaking to that, I, I think we also need to not overlook the power of little things, little things, little acts of faithfulness become big acts of faithfulness, mm-hmm. right? Um, this is actually what I'm teaching on at Youth Tonight, but Daniel, his first act of faithfulness when he get, gets brought into Babylon is to change his diet. And then God later leads him to mm-hmm. huge acts of faithfulness. Mm-hmm. But his first act is a simple thing. You know, so sometimes I, th- I think maybe having that that understanding, I'm temporary here, but what's something small I can do now mm-hmm. that grows into something bigger? There's an idea, uh, can I share I mean, an idea real quick? So one of the, it's hard to, just maybe speaking from a, from a it might be hard to value the needs of a maybe a demographic that's far removed from my own a season of life, like they're not my grandparents, it's mm-hmm. not my great aunties, right? Yeah. Um, so it might be hard for me to think in terms of priorities as far as those things that are so distant because my parents live a couple hours away, my grandparents live in other places, you know. But when I begin to love God's people around me mm-hmm. and make friendships with people around me, it might not be my grandparent who's to be cared for, but I love you and I care about you and your family and that's your grandparent. And now that grandparent who's local, that's not mine by by birth, but now mine by faith. Mm-hmm. I care about some of you from grandparents like, well, my kids have all grown up and they moved away. My grandkids are all over the state, all over the country. Like, why would I, my, my mind's just not thinking about the kids here in Brooksville. I'm thinking about the, my grandkids who are over there, over there, over there. But when you begin to love and get to know the families in the church and then those grand, those children, now become your grandkids, not by birth, but by faith, Mm -hmm. you begin to see like an investment here isn't a lost investment because my grandkids will never get it. It's a real investment because my spiritual grandkids get to enjoy it. And similarly, my my real grandparents will never see my going to this, um, this is the living home and blessing there. But my grandparents by faith Mm. get to be benefited by that now because I've actually come to love it. So I mean, there's all kinds of things in there. Like if it's hard to think long-term, maybe it's because we're not loving the people he's given around and given us that connection that will mean we're actually a part of. Just a thought. Like, yeah. kind of rambling. Treat, like treat older women as mothers. Treat older men as fathers. There you go. Yeah. That's more yeah. succinct than what I was saying. I like that. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good. I think that's scripture too. That's, that's right. That always is helpful. Well, there's plenty more we could talk about yeah. today. And I hope in your group that you'll pick up some of these things after, as we send out some questions. Um, a little bit later and uh, talk about some things that we couldn't talk about in this video because we've got to get ready for that second service. But uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this is a blessing to you. And if it is a blessing, just share it on your Facebook or your Twitter or or YouTube channel, whatever you want to do, just make use of it and uh, let it be a blessing to other people as well. So until next week, God bless you and have a great group.